Consider a metallic sphere on an insulating stand. When a negatively charged ebonite rod is rubbed on the metal sphere, some of the excess electrons from the rod are transferred to it. Once the electrons are on the conducting sphere, where they can move readily, the rod is removed, they repel one another, and spread out over the sphere's surface. The insulating stand prevents them from flowing to Earth, where they could spread out even more. In this case, the sphere is left with a negative charge distributed over its surface. In a similar manner, the sphere would be left with a positive charge after being rubbed with a positively charged rod. In this case, electrons from the sphere would be transferred to the rod. Remember, the electrons do all of the moving. The process of giving one object a net electric charge by placing it in contact with another object that is already charged is known as charging by contact. It is also possible to charge a conductor in a way that does not involve contact. Suppose a negatively charged rod is brought close to, but does not touch, a metal sphere. In the sphere, the free electrons closest to the rod move to the other side. As a result, the part of the sphere nearest the rod becomes positively charged, and the part farthest away becomes negatively charged. These positively and negatively charged regions have been induced to form because of the repulsive force between the negative rod and the free electrons in the sphere. When the rod is removed, the free electrons return to their original places and the charged regions disappear. Now, let's again bring the charged rod near the surface of the sphere. Under most conditions, the Earth is a good electrical conductor. So when a metal ground wire is connected between the sphere and the ground, some of the free electrons leave the sphere and enter the Earth. If the grounding wire is then removed, followed by the rubber rod, the sphere is left with a positive net charge. The process of giving one object a net electric charge without touching the object to a second charged object is called charging by induction. The process could also be used to give the sphere a negative net charge if a positively charged rod were used. Then, electrons would be drawn up from the earth through the grounding wire and onto the sphere. If the sphere were made from an insulating material like plastic instead of metal, the method of producing a net charge by induction would not work because very little charge would flow through the insulating material and down the grounding wire. However, the electric force of the charged rod would have some effect on the insulating material. The electric force would cause the positive and negative charges in the molecules of the material to separate slightly, with the negative charges being pushed away from the negative rod. Although no net charge is created, the surface of the plastic does acquire a slight induced positive charge and is attracted to the negative rod. It is attracted in spite of the repulsive force between the negative rod and the negative charges in the plastic. This is because the negative charges in the plastic are further away from the rod than the positive charges are. For a similar reason, one piece of cloth can stick to another in the phenomenon known as static cling, which occurs when an article of clothing is acquired an electric charge while being tumbled about in the clothes dryer. In summary, insulators and conductors can be charged by contact. Conductors can be charged by induction. Finally, when a charged object comes close to the molecules of an insulator, the electric force can cause the charges in the molecules to separate.